Welcome to another tutorial. My name is Atenas and this is Mode Bespoke. For today's project, we're going to be making the paper airplane gift bag. Now this is an intermediate Tunisian crochet project. So you do have to be comfortable with the Tunisian simple stitch and you also have to be col comfortable using color switches. So let's get started. So this is what our bag is going to look like once it is completed. So here's the front side and here's the back. It is, I would say it's about a medium sized bag, but here's a, just a standard size sheet of paper. So you would line it up down here. So that's about, about how big it is. So you can resize this. We'll talk about that at the end of the tutorial, but this is the size we're going to be working on today. Let's move on to the materials list. So for our materials, we're going to need three different colors of yarn. And I just used just the Walmart yarn, and this is a size 4. So any yarn you want, as long as it's a size 4. You're going to need a yarn or a tapestry needle, a pair of scissors. Your hook is going to be a Tunisian hook, and this is a 5 millimeter Tunisian hook. And you're going to need the chart. You can purchase the chart on its own, or you can get the set, which is the chart and the written pattern together. So that is available on the website and I will link that down in the description box below. So the way you read this chart is the numbers along the sides of the chart are your row numbers. The numbers on the bottom and the top are your stitch numbers. And the way you read this since it is a Tunisian pattern is you start on stitch one, row one, and then you work your way all the way across, complete a return pass, and then you move on to row number two complete row number two, a return pass, and then row number three. So just a quick tip for when you're using the chart. If you're right-handed, fold the chart like this so that you have your numbers. So see your numbers go from right to left. And that way, as you're working along in the chart, you can fold the stitch number over and you can just fold your paper as you go so that you can keep track of what stitch you're working on. This is gonna be really, really useful when you get to this section so that you can fold it over like this and know what stitch you're on. If you're left-handed, you're gonna read the chart from left to right. So I put these numbers up here. Just do the same. Fold your, your sheet right here so that you have your numbers, so your stitch numbers, and then you're just gonna start down here. So, and you're just gonna go this way. So that's just a little tip to hopefully make this, this chart a lot easier for you to read. So to begin, we need to start with a slip knot. So I'm just going to grab my yarn here through this loop, pull that on my hook, and then you're going to need to make a chain of 30 stitches. And once you have your chain made, so here we go, 30, we can begin with our foundation row. So we're gonna have to cast on so you're going to go into the second stitch from your hook. Let me zoom in a bit. You're going to insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So we have cast on one. Go into the next stitch and in every stitch of the row, and you're just going to repeat this over and over. So we're just going to continue to cast on. And once you have completely cast on, we're going to begin with our return pass. And this is going to be a regular return pass. So yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, until you are left with just one loop on your hook. And once you've got just the one loop left on your hook, let's take a look here at our chart. And we're gonna be working the first two rows is just Tunisian stitch. So if you're unfamiliar with this or have been moving too quickly, do check out that Tunisian 101 course um, because you're going to have to be very comfortable with this stitch before we can before you can complete this um, this pattern. So let's begin by skipping this very first vertical stitch. You already have it on your hook. Go into that second stitch, and you're just going to insert your hook behind the front loop, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So we have cast on one. So cast on one. Tunisian stitch 
for every stitch of your row. Once you get to the end of the row, you're going to cast on one for that last stitch here on the row. And I like to go through these last two loops. So just insert your hook behind those, yarn over, and pull up a loop. And we have cast on. So now just complete a regular return pass. So for this, you're just going to yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, until you have completed the entire row. And while I finish this, you're going to repeat this exact same thing we just did. So complete your return pass. So get to this row, cast on again, and complete a second return pass because it was two rows. So see, we've completed two rows of our work. So now it's time to move on to row number three. And we have to start adding the color for the little airplane. So I'm going to use gray and red this time. So let's go here to row number three. And we're going to do one stitch in white. And then we're going to start adding the gray. Let me show you here on the chart. So we have just one stitch in gray and then the rest of our row is worked completely in white Tunisian stitches. Here's our work. We're going to Tunisian simple stitch into that second stitch of the row. And then we're going to grab our gray yarn or any other color you wanted to use for the airplane. So we grab this here. And you're going to leave a long tail end of yarn here before we start stitching. So insert your hook into the next stitch. So that's going to be stitch number two. Insert your hook into the stitch and you're going to make a loop with your gray yarn around your hook. and Pull that loop through the stitch. And then you just drop the gray yarn and you continue to cast on in the white yarn. So since we only had that one gray stitch, the rest of it becomes quite easy. So complete the rest of the row, complete your return pass until you get to this stitch right here, and I'll see you again. So here we go. So I completed the rest of the row and a return pass, and now I'm on my return pass on the way back. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through two. So before we go into this stitch, for everyone who watched last week's tutorial, we worked uh, something similar, but we only worked our pattern in two different colors. So this is going to be very similar to that um, in that, see we have our stitches here already on our hook. The next stitch that we were going to pull our uh, return pass through is the gray one. So we need to switch our yarn in order to complete this part of the return pass. So the next stitch is gray, which means we're going to grab the gray yarn and you just drop the white yarn. You're going to yarn over and pull through two. And then the stitch after that is white. So we're going to drop the gray yarn, pick up the white yarn, and then you just drop these. So whatever color you're not using, just drop it. Don't cut it. You're going to yarn over and pull through two. So there's one, two, and then yarn over and pull through the remaining two loops on your hook. And there we go. So that was row number three. So for row number four, we're just going to be adding another gray stitch. So you start with one white and then two gray. The rest of the row is completed in white stitches. So we're going to do one white stitch and then we're going to switch to gray. So remember to just drop the white yarn. We're going to do one stitch in gray and then the second stitch in gray. So just pull up a loop in the stitch right after that. So see now we have two. Drop the gray yarn pick up the white yarn and then continue to cast on in white. So cast on all of your stitches and work the return pass until you get right around to this to these gray stitches. So like a stitch or two before the gray. So here we go. I completed the row and completed my return pass. And now I've reached these gray stitches. So here, let's do yarn over, pull through two. So there we go. So here are my two gray stitches. So we drop the white yarn, pick up the gray, and then you're going to yarn over and pull through two, and then yarn over. See, we have one more gray. So yarn over and pull through two. The next stitch is white, 
So you drop the gray yarn, pick up the white yarn, and you're going to yarn over and pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. And there we go. For row number five, we're going to begin with one stitch in white, and we're also going to begin the heart here. So it's one stitch in white, three in gray, and then we have to go to stitch number 23 before we begin the red stitches or pink or whatever color you're using. So let's get started here. So the first stitch we said is a white stitch. So we've got one here in white. Then we have three stitches in gray. So switch to your gray yarn and cast on three stitches. And then you're going to switch back to white. And let's see, we have one, two, three, four. So this next stitch we're going to cast on is stitch number five, six, seven, and just continue until you get to stitch number 22. So here we are at 22. So now for stitch number 23, we have to cast on in red. So insert your hook into that stitch. So into stitch number 23, make a loop in either red or pink, whatever color you want for your heart. So loop that around your hook and pull through the stitch. So we need two stitches in red. So I'm going to pull up two of those. And you're just going to drop the yarn, pick up the white one, and cast on the remaining stitches of your row. There you go. So here's a white one. And then just cast on. Since we're here at the end of the row already, I'm just going to continue to film while doing this. So let me get here through the end of the row. And then we're going we're gonna to begin, excuse me, our return pass. So here we go. And once you get to the red stitches, remember to switch color. So drop the white yarn, pick up the red yarn, and then yarn over, pull through two. And then yarn over, pull through two. Now you drop the red, pick up the white, and continue your return pass in white. Once you get to those gray stitches, don't forget to switch color so again. I'm just going to continue to work my return pass, and I'll try to work through this one really quickly, just so that I can show you this one example of going through and working the return pass with a total of three colors. But here we go. So now that we've reached the gray stitches, see we've got three of these. We're going to switch to gray. There we go. And then just yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then we're going to switch to white for these last two stitches. There we go. And then just pay attention to where you drop your yarn so it doesn't get tangled. And there we go. So there's our row. Now let's go into the next row. So here we have one stitch in white, one in gray, one in white, and then two gray. And then on the heart, we're going to add a stitch on either side to make it a little bit wider. So we have one stitch on the left and then one stitch on the right that we are adding. So let's get working on this. So we begin with one stitch in white and then we're going to switch to gray. So it's one gray, one in white, and then two in gray. So one and two. And then the rest of the stitches, we're just going to work in white for a minute up until we get to the heart. So at this point, you can count stitches if you want to, or you can just work. Um, you can cast on stitches until you get to these stitches right before the heart. So I'm going to work until I have one white stitch right before the heart, and then we're going to turn these stitches into red stitches. So just switch to your red yarn. We're going to cast on one and then two, three, and four. So those are the four stitches we needed. And now we can switch back to white and finish the row. So here we go. And there we go. And now it's time to work our return pass. So yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and so forth. But here, let's take a look at our um, chart really quickly. Now you're going to notice that the heart starts to open up. 
and our paper airplane opens up. Now we have a lot of white stitching in between the two gray sides, and then there's a big jump here with the different color switches. So as your color switches begin to grow, you really need to start focusing on the tension of your work because that will affect how flat your project is gonna lay. So from these stitches, we've got a really big jump between the white stitches on one side and the white stitches on the other side. So once you've completed here the heart, that you switch back to your white yarn on your return pass, you're going to need to leave this white yarn loose. So yarn over and pull through two and make sure that the tension on this yarn that's left behind your heart, that it is really, really loose. If you tighten it, so here, let me tighten this real quick to show you. So if you pull on this and tighten it, it's gonna scrunch up your work. So it's gonna scrunch up the heart and then it won't look like a heart at all. So that's why, I'm, that's why it's important to pay attention to how much tension you're using while you're, you're working on your return pass. So just make sure that your work is nice and loose. You're, ha you're gonna have this long thread back here and that's okay. Let me grab here my example, my little sample bag to show you what it's gonna look like. So here's the bag, it's already completed. And what the inside is gonna look like, it's gonna be a lot like stranded knitwork. So if you're familiar with stranded knitwork, it's kind of what it looks like in the back. So you're gonna have all of these long threads. So like this part right here is this loop. So on the chart. Here you can see the little paper airplane. So see as it gets wider, the strands in the back of the work start to get longer as well. So every time you work a return pass, you just need to make sure that that thread that's right here in the back is nice and loose. So you'll see this a little bit more as we work along. But that way your work lays flat, just like this little uh, paper airplane in the hearts. They just lay flat when you open the bag. Now, if you don't like the way that this looks, you can sew a liner onto the back of this work. So um, I have a purse liner tutorial that I'll link uh, at the top of the video and then I'll also place it in the description box but you can also sew these threads down so just use regular thread and sew across these to sew them down and flat against your bag and that way it won't get caught up with anything but back to our work I'm just going to continue to work my return pass until I get to my color switch and then this will be the very last color switch I work with you guys since I think by this point you kind of understand how it works so just make sure that you work your return pass in the same color yarn as the stitch itself so here so we've got two stitches in gray so here let me switch my yarn you see we've got a few stitches in gray and then white and then we go back to gray so I'll do my yarn over pull through and yarn over pull through again here in gray then I have to switch to white for that one stitch so yarn over pull through two in white we have one stitch in gray, so we have to switch color again. And then we're gonna finish those last two white stitches in our white yarn. And there we go. So let's take a look at our chart one more time here. We are now on row number seven. So we're gonna work one white, one gray, two white, and then we're gonna follow it up with two gray stitches. And once we get to the heart, we're gonna start in the same stitch on the right side. So it's just one above the other. And on the left, we're gonna add a stitch leaning towards the left. So we're gonna make our heart just a little bit wider. So here, let's get started real quick with the plane. So we have one stitch in white. And then we have one in gray. And we said two in white. So we've got one, two, and then two in gray. So there's one, two. Now we're gonna keep working in white until we get to the heart. There we go, so now we're at the heart. So I have this white stitch right here. And we have to work our first stitch of the heart right above the other one. So the one from the previous row. So there we go. And we're gonna work five, we're gonna cast on a total of five red stitches, which means we are going to add one stitch here at the end of the row just to make the heart a little bit wider and then we switch back to our white yarn and work these last few stitches of the row and there we go
So now just work your return pass and remember to switch your colors. So as you approach the different color yarn or the different color stitches, switch your yarn to match the stitch color. So let me finish working these red stitches real quick. I'll switch over to the white yarn. And remember to leave a really loose tension here. So yarn over and pull through two. But once you've pulled through, make sure you loosen up that stitch so that your heart lays flat. So here we go. So see, nothing's all bunched up. Just continue to complete the return pass and I will see you at the end of the row. So here's my return pass. I've gone through and I finished it all up. Made sure to switch my colors where I needed to. And now, now you would follow the chart to finish the rest of the design. So for the little plane, the heart, and all of the other little features on here, finish it the same way that we've been working the design. Crochet the rest of the work to match the chart. So make sure that your stitch numbers on your work match the stitch numbers on the chart. Once you are done with that, then you sew the bag together and then we crochet the handle and this the handle part is crochet just in regular crochet so we're not going to be using the Tunisian crochet like we were at the bottom of the bag so let's go over the numbers here for the chart um, this will be much easier if you have the printed chart in front of you just saying but for those of you that don't want to get the chart let's go through these numbers so let's go over the plane real quick so the stitches on the side of the plane are always going to be the same so it's one white stitch one gray stitch this side is always going to be two stitches in gray now let's go over the numbers in the middle so for the next row, we're going to do three white stitches and then the plane. And for the heart, you're just going to shift everything one stitch over to the left. So you're going to have one little white stitch poking out here at the top and then one toward the left. So it's still five stitches total. Now for row number nine, you're going to have four white stitches and then you have the two gray ones. So here it's four white and then the two gray. You get to the heart, you're going to shift everything over one stitch to the right. So you're gonna have five red stitches. For the next row, you're gonna have five stitches in white. You're gonna shift everything over to the left and you're going to decrease by one stitch. The next row, you're gonna have six in white. And then for the heart, you're gonna be, you're gonna go down to two stitches. So you're gonna remove one on the right side and one on the left side so that you're left with just two. And you're gonna be done with the heart. The other two hearts on the pattern are exactly the same as this one. So it's exactly the same stitch counts. So you're gonna have, you're gonna start with a two stitch. So it's two, four, five, 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 and then four, two. They're exactly the same. So let's take a look at row number 12. So inside the heart, we're gonna have seven stitches. And then row number 13 is this eight. So it's gonna be eight white stitches. Row number 14, we're gonna have nine. Row number 15 should be 10 stitches, 10. And then for row number 16, we are gonna work four stitches in white. And the rest of the plane, it's gonna be eight stitches in gray. And they should end the same as stitch number 15. For row number 17, you have three, and then two gray, one white, one gray. Let me get a little bit closer. For row 18, you have two white, two gray, two white, one gray. For 19, you have one white and then the rest of those in gray. And then you finished the little bottom part of your paper airplane. For 20, you're going to have three in gray. 21 is two. 21 is one. So let's go over that a little bit more slowly. So for row 20, you're going to have three stitches in gray. The rest of the row, you work in white stitches. So then you get to 21, you're going to have two stitches in gray. And then you're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six stitches in white and then one in gray. For row 22, you're going to have one in gray. And then you're going to have seven stitches in white and then one in gray. And then the rest of the row is all in white. So row 23 is a row that you are completely in white. And now for row 24, because it's going to start to get a little confusing here, so I'm just going to fold my numbers. Let me fold that up and line them up. I'm going to give you the stitch number where these stitches, where the different color stitches happen. 
So for row 24, on stitch 12 is gray. Row 25, stitch number 5 and 6 are in red. Stitch number 12 is in gray. Row 26, stitch 4 through 7 is in uh, red and the rest in white. Row number 27, it's row, uh, what is it, stitch 4 through 8 in red or pink. 15 in gray. For row 28, it's 5 through 9 in red and 15 in gray. For 29, it's stitch 4 and through 8, the rest in white. For row 30, you have stitch 4 through 7 in red, stitch 18 in gray. Row 31, you have stitch 5 and 6 in red, stitch 18 in gray. For row 32, it's stitch number 21 in gray. For row 33, it's stitch 21 in gray. For row 34, stitch 24 in gray. For row 35, stitch 13 and 24 are in gray. For row 36, it's 13 and 16 in gray. For row 37, you have 11, 16, and 26 in gray. For row 38, it's going to be 11, 19, here we go, 11, 19, and 26. For row 39, we have stitch 9 and 19. For st uh, row 40 is 9 and 21. For row 41, it's stitch 21 and 26. For row 42, it's stitch 9 and 26. For row 46, it's going to be stitch 9. For row 44, it's 11 and 23. For 45, it's also 11 and 23. For 46, it's 14 and 20. For 47, it's 14, 17, and 20. For row 48, it's going to be stitch 17 and 24. For 49, it's stitch 24. Row 50 and 51, they're all in white. For row 52, we have 6 and 7 is a heart, and 23 is gray. So for row 53, it's 5 through 8 is heart, and 23 is gray. Um, row 54, we have stitch 5 through 9 for the heart, the rest in white. For row 55, it's stitch 6 through 10 for the heart, and 20 in gray. For row 56, it's stitch 5 through 9 for the heart, 20 for gray. Row 57, it's stitch 5 through 8 for the heart, 17 in gray. For row 58, it's stitch 6 and 7 for the heart, and then 14 and 17 in gray. For row 59, we have stitch 14 in gray. And then 60 and 61 are exactly the same, and you're just going to stitch one uh, gray stitch on stitch number 11. So that's for row 60 and 61, and you're done with the chart. So here's the work already complete, so that's row 1 through 61. Now we're ready to move on to the bind off. So let me get everything set up here again. So we are going to work a slip stitch bind off. So for those of you that have experience, go ahead and just start your slip stitch bind off. If you need to see what this looks like, let me zoom in a little bit. So see all these big spaces between the stitching? We need to close those um, because if you don't close those up when you sew your bag together, they're going to be highly visible. So you want to do a bind off row before you sew your work together. So for this, we're just going to insert our hook into the stitch, kind of like you would a knit stitch. So skip the first stitch and go into the second one. So insert your hook behind that top loop. So see that there's top and bottom loop, or the, the loop in the front and loop in the back. So go through the front loop 
and push your hook all the way to the back. And then you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. So for the slip stitch, you're going to pull the top loop through the bottom loop. The top loop on the hook, you're going to pull that through the bottom loop. There you go, and that's a slip stitch. Let's do another one. So you're going to insert your hook into the stitch so it's behind that top loop and all the way through the back of the work. And then you yarn over and pull your hook out. So you pull up a loop and you're going to pull the top loop through the bottom loop. And there's a slip stitch. So insert your hook into the stitch. Make sure you go behind the top loop. So go through between both of the loops of the, st of the stitch and insert your hook all the way to the back. And then pull up a loop and pull the top loop through the bottom loop. So continue to slip stitch in every stitch of the row. See, as you can see, it's starting to close up the stitching, and that's exactly what we want it to do. So complete the rest of your bind off, and once you get here to this last stitch, and work a slip stitch in that last stitch of the row, and then you're just going to chain one, and that's going to make a little knot right here at the bottom of the work. So you're just going to pull on your yarn, and make sure you cut a really long thread of yarn. You're going to use this to sew your bag closed. So cut a really, really long tail end, pull your hook out, and then pull the yarn out along with it so that you're left with just a single thread. Pull on the yarn a bit to tighten that knot. And now you're going to need a yarn or a tapestry needle to weave in all of the ends. So for the heart, I had two. And then down here, I had a little, a little tail end and up here. So weave in all of your tail ends before moving on to the sewing. So if you don't know how, I'll link a tutorial up at the top part of the video so that you can learn how to weave in the ends. But weave those through and then get your yarn and tapestry needle and thread it through that yarn that we have. So this really long tail end. Fold your, your bag in half with the narrow sides joined together. And you're going to sew along the bottom of the bag. So let me get set up real quick. And then line up the corners here and just give it a couple of stitches. So here's one. And then there's another one. Now you can do this a couple different ways. You can fold your bag inside out and you can stitch along the inside of the bag. So that's one option. You can use any stitch you want. Just make sure that you uh, make nice tight little stitches so that your bag doesn't open up. Or you can sew this way. And what I like to do is I just line up both edges of my work and try to line them up so that your stitches line up as well. And then we're going to sew across both of the stitches. So I'm going to start here on one side. We're going to do it this way. So begin here at the very bottom most stitch on just on one side of your work and go through all the way above the stitch. So Popping through the bottom of the stitch, go through to the top, and then pull your yarn through. And now go do the same on the other side. So go to that bottom stitch and pull up through to the top and then sew across. Go back to the right side of your work and then right where that yarn came out, that's where you want to insert your yarn needle. And then see, you pop on the other side of the stitch and you're going to do this you're going to work one side at a time. So you always do the stitch on one side and then you go across to the other side of your bag and you sew again. So this will leave a really nice little seam along the bottom part of your bag. So here we go on one side and then go through on the other side and just continue to sew along the bottom part of your Those bag. Those of you that weren't quite able to see what I was doing, let me zoom in real quick. And then also a couple more stitches. So see so here's the bottom of the stitch. So I'm going to go in through the bottom part of the stitch, go towards the top of it, and sew. And then do the same on this other side. There we go. And then notice that all of my stitches are lining up. It makes so it makes the seam a little more invisible. 
if you can line up the seams, or not the seams, the stitches. So just continue to sew this way all along the bottom part of the bag. So just all of this, make a knot here at the end, weave in your tail ends, and then you're gonna re-thread your needle and sew along the side of the bag. Now the side of the bag might look a little bit different. So let me zoom in here and show you real quick. There we go. So you're gonna have to look for the stitches here. So here's a stitch, here's a stitch, here's a stitch, here's a stitch. So those are the stitches here on the left side of the bag. Now on the side that you did your bind off, see you're gonna have your stitches here on the inside. Just fold this little bit towards the back and then you'll be able to clearly see the stitches. So here's one, here, here. So it makes it a lot easier to see. Those are the stitches you wanna work into. That way your seam will, will be a little more invisible. Once you've completed the, the sewing part, so see we've sewn our back completely shut, just have this top part open, we can start to sew the handles. Now, if you are left-handed, start sewing this with a seam on the left side, and then we're gonna crochet across the top. If you're right-handed, keep the seam on your right hand. And then this is important because we're gonna have some stitch counts. So for those of you that are a little more advanced and just kinda of wanna finish with this, you're gonna do two rows of single crochet, so all the way in the round. And then on that third row, you're gonna need a couple of stitch markers and you're gonna place those on stitch number eight, uh, stitch number 24, yeah, cause it's 16 stitches in here. So 24, 40, and then 56. So you're gonna single crochet until you get to the stitch marker and then chain 16, single crochet, chain 16, single crochet. In the next row, you're gonna single crochet till you get to this stitch. On the chain, you're going to single crochet 20, and then single crochet, single crochet 20, all the way around. This last row is just a row of single crochets. So single crochet one in every stitch, and there you go. So the reason we did 20 in that chain is so that we can get a round handle. So by adding more stitches into that chain space, it's gonna create this nice little round handle look that we have here so more on that later though but for everybody who needs to see what i just explained because you have no idea what's going on let's work on this together so beginning on that very first stitch right next to the seam or right on the seam you're just going to make a loop around your hook and you're going to pull it through that stitch there we go and then chain one now you can chain one with both threads, you can chain one with one, it doesn't matter, just chain one and then drop that tail end of yarn you're not using. And then we're just gonna single crochet all the way around. So to single crochet, let's go into this next stitch. So here's the stitch right there. We're gonna do two rows of this, all right? So insert your hook into the stitch. like so and then you're going to yarn over and pull your hook out and then you just yarn over and pull through both of those loops or i guess in this case it's three but yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook there you go now go into the next stitch insert your hook and then we're going to yarn over and pull the hook out we're going to have two loops on our hook we're just gonna yarn over and pull through two. We'll do one more. Insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through two. So single crochet all the way around and do two rounds of this. So go all the way around and when you get to the end, you're not gonna, you don't need to chain one or anything. We're just going to work in a continuous round. So here we are at the end. You're just gonna skip that little chain stitch that we did and work directly into the next one. So just single crochet right into the next stitch and then you don't have to worry about chain one, start a new round. You can just crochet in the round continuously. Once you worked a total of two rows, we're gonna start to place our stitch markers. So you can use a stitch marker, a bobby pin, whatever you have. I want these to be evenly spaced so that we have nice matching even handles. So I'm gonna count eight stitches from the seam. 
So that's why I had you begin on the seam. Count eight stitches. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we just kind of want them to match. So start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, until you get to eight and place a stitch marker on stitch number eight. And then you're gonna count 16 stitches. You're gonna skip those, stitch number 24. So here's stitch number 24, and you're gonna count 16. You're gonna go to stitch number 40 and place your other stitch marker, and then another one in stitch 56. But you can just be lazy and do one side. So stitch number eight, and then stitch number 24. And just fold your bag in half and match up your stitch markers to the other side. And that works too. So you just want them to match. So you just kind of eyeball it. And now let's start with our single crochets. So now let me grab my hook, get set up again. And then we're gonna do our first row here. So you're just gonna start to single crochet in every stitch again until you get to that first stitch marker. So let me zoom in. Sorry, there's a really loud plane flying by, so I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm sorry if you can. All right, so here's our stitch marker. We've got one stitch here, and you're gonna crochet into the stitch with the stitch marker. So just single crochet in here. And then you're going to chain 16 because that is the number of stitches that we skipped. So from the dark blue stitch marker to the light blue stitch marker, that's 16 stitches. So chain 16. So if you want a handle that's a little bit wider, you can separate the stitch markers a little bit more and then just chain a, a bigger number. But if you do that, make sure the other side matches. So, okay. So here are my 16 stitches. I'm going to single crochet in the stitch marker. So skip all of those stitches, go to the next stitch marker and single crochet in there. And then you're just going to single crochet in all of these stitches till you get to the red stitch marker. And then you're going to chain 16 and skip all the way to the pink stitch marker. At that point, you just single crochet around. So finish up this the rest of the round, and I'll see you here in a minute. So I completed my round. So see, here's my little blue stitch marker that we started with. Now let's go here to this next part. So single crochet all the way until you get to that blue stitch marker again, or to that very first one that you used. And then we're going to single crochet in the stitch right above that. And in this chain space, we are going to single crochet 20 on the inside of it. So you're just gonna insert your hook into the chain space. So into this big old space, yarn over and pull up a loop, and then you're gonna yarn over and pull through two. So insert your hook into the big chain space, yarn over, and then yarn over, pull through two. So you just single crochet. So we're gonna do 20 of these in each of the chain spaces. And once you have finished that, you can go through and just kind of separate them a bit, spread them out so that it goes all the way around. So if you have a little bit of space, don't stress out. You're supposed to have 20 stitches in here, so you're going to be okay. If you just spread these out a little bit, there you go. You'll fill out all of the spacing. But when you do your next row, which is just a row of single crochets, all of this is going to close up a bit more and you won't have any visible chain space. So, see, that's how it's going to look once you finish. So now back to our work. So let me get set up again. You're going to single crochet into the stitch with a stitch marker, so right above it. Let me zoom in right here so I can show you. So here's the blue stitch marker. You're going to skip that very first bit. You're going to go into the first full stitch, like so. And then just single crochet all the way around until you get to the next chain space. So all of these are single crochet. Crochet 20 into that chain space and then just work the rest of the round. So for that very last round, I think you can do that one on your own. And for that one, all you're gonna do is just a single crochet in each one of the stitches. So see all these little stitches up here? Just single crochet into each one of these, just doot, 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 until you get all the way around. Then just cut your yarn and weave in your ends and you should be done. So if you wanted to resize this bag, you can't make it any smaller. You can make it bigger though. 
because the number of stitches you need, so this design is 30 stitches wide. So you need all 30 of those stitches in order to create little paper airplane with the hearts and everything. So you can't make it smaller. If, however, you wanna make the bag bigger, then you would add rows at the beginning and then at the end. So our chart would be here. Say you wanted to add 10 stitches up here, because let's see, that would be about this big. So we want 10 stitches here and then 10 stitches here. So when you would start your initial chain, you would do the 10 beginning ones. So that's 10 plus 30 plus 10. So that would be 50 stitches across. So you would chain 50 and then just remember to count the 10 stitches you need with just the regular Tunisian crochet and then the 30 that you need for this image and then the remaining ones that have nothing else to them. Um, if you wanted to make a really, really large bag, you could also just crochet just the image itself. So you can do the entire pattern from the chart and then instead of sewing it closed like this, you can leave it and use it as a large patch. And then you would just sew it onto whatever size bag you wanted to make. Uh, but that's about it as far as the handle goes. This is, I think this is a very comfortable size. I mean, it's easy to grab it, there's still space. So the 16 inch, or the 16 stitches in between is, is very comfortable. If you make a much wider bag, then I would just place the stitch markers where you want them and just make sure that you can comfortably fit your hand in there. So just kind of close your hand and make sure that it fits comfortably. Um, but do make more stitches once you go your second time around. So that way um, it pops it up a little bit. So if you do more stitches, it'll make it rounder. So the more stitches you add on that second row, the rounder that this handle is gonna be. So I only went with the 20 on a 16 uh, stitch chain, but you can change that to whatever you want. Uh, but that's about it. If you have any questions or you will need help to resize this, just let me know. You can just shoot me an email or you can leave it down in the comments below. I'm happy to help. Just let me know what it is you're trying to do. Um, that way I can, I can help. But that's it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I post videos every week. If you want to see any more of my work, you can follow me on Instagram and I'll leave all of that information up on the screen. Go check out the website where I have all of the patterns that you've seen for the projects here on YouTube. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.